Hey friends, welcome to Post to Post. Here we are again with preseason predictions. This is my fifth year of doing this. Technically, I think I'm going on year six, but I started my first year on YouTube. I started halfway through a season. So this is the fifth prediction or preseason prediction that I've done doing the standings and picking the winner of the Stanley Cup. Of all the years so far, I've only gotten it right once. Every other year has been basically completely wrong. The year that I did, I did get right was the uh, year that the Washington Capitals won the Stanley Cup. Now, I have to preface these predictions a little bit by um, saying how disconnected I am from hockey. I discussed this a little bit in a recent video, but I was very emotionally uninvested in last season and also the season before, but specifically last season. So much so that I actually forgot about certain trades that had happened after the trade deadline, or sorry, before the trade deadline, and then in, in this off season as well. So I had to like literally go through a re-education process in the past week or week and a half as I did these predictions and I still don't even really know what's going on in the NHL. So I think for the first year, these predictions are not really educated, educationally based. They're more like gut based. So like I would say like 99% of my uh, predictions this year is going to be based on a gut feeling, which is probably the worst kind of, uh, you know, that's the worst kind of prediction. So I'm I'm not going to be upset at all. I mean, I, I always do this for fun. It's always for fun. But specifically this year, I, I'm not going to be upset if I'm if I'm very wrong. And feel free to be very um, critical of my predictions down below in the comment section. If you want to give me some heat, I can take it. We're going to start off with the Atlantic Division, and I'm going to go from uh, we'll go from eight to one. I think in in every um, in every division here. Worst to best. So in the Atlantic Division, I'm going to be looking down a little bit here. I got my notes in the Atlantic Division in eight. I have uh, I have the Canadians. And I think that's a relatively reasonable prediction. They're a team that uh, saw obviously very high highs two years ago and very low lows last season. And I, I honestly didn't even watch much uh, Montreal Canadiens hockey last year. They are my favorite team, and um, you know it's it's very disappointing to see how how poor that they are. But they've also made like a lot of really interesting and good moves, uh, not just in the ro from a roster perspective, but also from uh, a management perspective, from top down. So I'm really happy with the moves that they've made in the last, we'll say, I guess a year, you know, a year and a half. And I think that in three years, I think I'm going to be very, very happy with my team. So, you know, the Canadians aren't a team that's going to win the Stanley Cup this year. They're probably not even going to make the playoffs. And I fully suspect them to come last in the division. Um, I think at very best, they're a bubble team. And I think that is a, a very good season for the Montreal Canadiens if they can be a bubble team. I think this is more of like a progression year for them. Just kind of, you know, a lot of young guys learning the ropes and stuff. So I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with this kind of transition or, or growth year rather. Number seven, I've got the Sabres. And this is really specifically because every year that I predict the Sabres to do good, they do bad. Every time I predict the Sabres to do bad, they do bad. So it doesn't really matter where I predict them. They always just seem to do bad. So I'm going to toss them in seventh. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. I don't think the Sabres are winning the Stanley Cup uh, this year either. However, I actually very genuinely would love to see the Sabres make the playoffs. I would love to see their fans in play in that arena in playoff games. I think it would just be one of the best things for hockey. Um, a non-Canadian team, obviously a bit of a smaller market. Buffalo is a pretty big market, actually, even though considering how bad they are, but still a small market compared to Canadian teams. But I think them making the playoffs would be such a, such a boost for that city and that region that would be just uh, really good for hockey overall. Number six, I have the Red Wings. So of all the teams in the Atlantic Division, I think the Red Wings are probably one of the teams that I'm going to end up watching the most outside of my Canadians. I'm going to try and watch every Canadians game if uh, if Sportsnet now and uh, TSN will let me. If you want to go see more on that, check out my rant video from the other day. But uh, I think the Red Wings are just a really interesting team for me because I... I really did not like the Red Wings for such a long time. They made the playoffs forever. Um, and then they, you know, they're, they're kind of coming down and now they're kind of coming back up. So that's when I'm really interested in teams when they're, when they are, or be, are becoming the underdog and they're on their way back up. I like the story up the hill versus story down the hill or at the top of the hill. I want to see how do, good they do and how they progress from year to year. I like some of the moves that, they, that they've made. I like some of the individual players on the team. I think they've got an interesting makeup as well. So I'm going to be definitely watching from some Red Wings hockey this year. I just don't think they're going to do uh, lots of damage and make the playoffs. Uh, number five, I've got the Bruins, and I think I think some people will disagree with this a little bit. I think most people would likely have the Bruins a little bit down their list in a typical year. They are not the same team they were last year, and I don't, and in, in a negative way, I don't think they're as good. I'm a little bit worried on the back end. I'm a little bit worried in net. I think um, up top, um, either their top six, I, I really like. Even their bottom six is, you know, I'm pretty happy with that actually. But on the defensive end. 
not great stuff. And um, honestly, in net, I just they're not you know their their tandem's not bad. I just it doesn't inspire a lot of confidence in me. So I, I don't know. Boston's a really hard one for me. I um, I actually see them maybe possibly missing the playoffs this year. This year, which is uh, maybe a bit of a controversial. Um, prediction, but anyways, that's that's it. Bruins in fifth, and fourth, maybe even more controversial. I have the Senators potentially making the playoffs, and I think of all the predictions here, there's one actually in the Central, which is very very gut related. In the Atlantic, this is big time gut related. I don't know why. I just like almost like biasly secretly want so the Senators to do really, really good this year. I love the, the transition of the team, both on the ice and off the ice, uh, from a management perspective, uh, from a, how they're growing their brand and stuff over the last uh, 12 months. I think it's, it's been really, really good to see Ottawa, some you know some really good positive things in Ottawa. There's so many negative things, negative stories from Ottawa for, it felt like three, four, five, six, seven years. It just was on and on and on. And now I think things are really, really getting positive in Ottawa. And uh, they could be a really good, good team. Um, I think sneaky good like no one expects them to win a Stanley Cup no one probably even has them making the playoffs other than myself because I'm being a bit silly but there's I don't know there's just something about the core something tells my gut that they're going to have a good year and I hope I'm right number three I've got the Maple Leafs and I think the majority of people would like to have would likely have them one or two but I've got them three and for me it really comes down to goaltending so with uh, Murray and Samsonov they have um obviously they have experience but I just don't think that they have like consistent deliverables I haven't seen, I think Matt Murray, I guess, would be the best, I guess, example of a consistent deliverable. He's He's got tons of playoff experience, uh, Stanley Cup, obviously. But, like, I want a good three-year chunk from a goalie, and I just don't see that in them. So I think they have the potential to absolutely, you know, like, do really well this year, regardless of, I don't, it doesn't matter who starts it. You know, it may, Sam Sonoff could steal the net for the rest of the year. Murray could take off, and, and you know, I, I believe individually in them in one year. I just don't know about like long term and they're both a little bit new obviously to the team and I just don't there's a lot of pressure so I think I would be more comfortable uh, putting the Maple Leafs like uh, you know one or two in the division or maybe absolutely first in like year two or year three I don't know about year one I want to see them first before I really truly commit to a top tier uh, ranking in the Atlantic but anyways Maple Leafs number three I do have them making the playoffs obviously uh, number two the Tampa Bay Lightning so I think I think Tampa comes to because of Florida. I'm not sure if that makes sense or not, but I think Florida's just going to have an excellent year like they did last year. I think Tampa is going to be phenomenal as well. But I just see Florida having the better regular season, and Tampa Bay is probably going to have the better uh, postseason, kind of like last year. Uh, I, I just see things kind of playing out that way. Tampa Bay tends to be able to like maintain the tank into the playoffs, where Florida, you know, it's almost a little bit unknown territory in the playoffs for them. Now, they did get a serious win last year, but still, I just feel like, ah, uh, I'm not sure. I just feel like there's a really, really good season in the tank for them, but I don't know about a postseason. I'll get to the final prediction of my Stanley Cup winner uh, later on, but I, I, did, I, you know, it's a good segue into number one, the Panthers. I'm really just interested to see some of the players on the Panthers, uh, and how they do this year. Obviously, Kachuk is there. I think that's going to be really interesting to see him in that jersey and to see him on that team. I think, I think it'll do well, and I think it'll do well from like a, from a viewer perspective for the Atlantic Division. So Ottawa and Florida play each other quite a bit, way more than Calgary and Ottawa played each other. So there's a brothers, you know, duo going head to head there. So I think just from a from a viewer lens. That's going to be pretty interesting to watch. And also Duclair. That's another player that I want to keep my eye on. I've, for whatever reason, just been really interested in his career throughout his, you know, since he joined the league. He's been with, I think, six teams. There was the Rangers, and then there was Chicago, and not in this order, I don't think. Arizona, Columbus. I'm missing one. And I think I think Florida's number... I think Florida's number six. I, I feel like I'm missing one. I just don't know what it is. But, you know, he's been around the league a little bit. He's only... I think he entered the league in 2014-ish, maybe. So I don't know. There's just something about him that I've always been interested in his career. I've always felt like he has a lot of potential. I feel like he does fit in quite well in Florida. He did pretty decent last year. I think he had almost 60 points. So I just want to see another good year from Duclair. Hopefully, you know, and no injuries stuff kind of crops up here. So yeah, I just, I'm really curious to see how he does and I think he'll, I think he'll do good. I think he'll do good. So I'm gonna keep my eye on him. So that wraps up the Atlantic Division. There are my predictions for the Atlantic Division. Let's move on to. Uh, we'll do the Metro. We'll, you know, we'll stay in the East. And number eight, I've, I put the Devils, for no real reason. I guess just that I think that they don't have the most cohesive team. 
there's some like on paper i think it looks a lot better than what we actually see on ice i don't know if that's a systematic thing from the coaching or if it's just you know players interacting with each other you know like personalities not melding and I, I don't really know i just don't feel the vibes from the devils and i can't really explain it other than that and they're a team that's not going to win the Stanley Cup. I think they're a bubble team, probably at best, kind of like Montreal, way better than Montreal, but just, you know, a, a bit of a bubble team. But I don't know. I just kind of threw them in eighth. I, I don't really know, to be completely honest. Number seven, I put the Flyers just because of, of heart, really. I, I don't really know. Kind of like the Devils, I don't really have a strong opinion here, I think. But with heart, maybe there's some consistency issues there. I think he had that, you know, obviously that one really good season. Um, and then that really bad season kind of after that. And like last season was definitely better, but still, I don't know. I, I From a game to game viewpoint, there's, you know, obviously some inconsistencies there. So I just want to see a, a really good consistent season from her. I'm rooting for them. I, I like to see the Flyers make the playoffs. It's good hockey to watch. I'm rooting for her because I like them, but I don't see them doing it this year. I see them in seventh. And number six, I put, put the Blue Jackets. Um, I don't know how the Blue Jackets are going to do. I like their top six. Their bottom six are okay. Their defense are okay i guess but uh johnny gaudreau i think he's going to be obviously the factor in columbus i think if columbus makes the playoffs johnny gaudreau has to be pretty much the best player he's you know the best season he's ever had i guess and if johnny gaudreau plays like average columbus isn't making the playoffs that's just kind of how i feel i could be absolutely wrong there but um I, i'm going to be watching actually columbus quite a bit this year i find that to be a really really interesting team i hope i'm wrong about them number five i put the capitals um i think up front the capitals are obviously a pretty decent team. I mean, they've got a veteran, they've got Backstrom, they've got some uh, excellent depth players as well. But on the defensive end, I do not like their defensive, uh, they're, they're basically their entire defense. I don't really love. I don't know. I just don't feel a lot of confidence from Capitals, or I don't have a lot of confidence in them this year. But again, I don't really know what I'm talking about this year. So <laughs> uh, Capitals in fifth, there you go. Number four, I've got the Islanders. This is such a difficult pr prediction because <sighs> they've disappointed me last year. I had them not only, I think, winning the division, but I had them winning the Stanley Cup. They were my last year's prediction to win the Stanley Cup. So, and they, and they completely disappointed me. Like, obviously they disappointed me. They did terrible. So this year, I'm not putting them first, second, or third. I'll put them in fourth. But I can even actually maybe see the Islanders slipping beyond that. Capitals moving to fourth, possibly Islanders in fifth or beyond. I just don't know how to feel about the Islanders. They just... I don't know how to predict them this year. I think on paper, it's a damn good team, but then you have to think about coaching. New coach this year, new system, how are the players going to deal with that? There's going to be a transition period. I just don't know. I, there's just so many questions around the Islanders this year. I just, I honestly have no idea. And number three, I put the Penguins. The Penguins are a team that like always delivers. They might not be first, they might not be second. They might just sneak into the playoffs, but like they just always deliver. So I fully expect the Penguins to make the playoffs this year. They've got the core, one of the longest cores in the entire league. And I think there's some players on the team that are just a little bit underrated, little spark plugs, spark plugs, little like possible game changers. And a player that it was a, maybe a good example would be, I don't know, like Ricard Raquel, for example. He's a player that could honestly put up like 60, 70, maybe even 80 points, absolute max, I think. But that's like obviously a career year for Ricard Raquel. But I just, I see that talent in him. I see that ability in him. We just don't get it from game to game. We just don't get it even from period to period. So Ricard Raquel is like, if he could have like the best year of his career, that would be actually massive for Pittsburgh as far as their progression through the season and uh, you know, where they fall in the standings. He could, he's, su he's such a talented player. But Ricard Raquel, an average Ricard Raquel, is like a 30 to 40 point year maybe, or maybe even just like 35 points. That is good for Pittsburgh. Obviously, 35 points, 40 points is, is decent. But if we get a bad Ricard Raquel, that could drastically hurt their lineup. So um, just players like that that could have like a really good year. If a couple of play those depth players on Pittsburgh have really good years, Pittsburgh could easily come first in the division, I think. It's a little bit of a bold statement, but uh, I can kind of see it happening a little bit. Number two, I have got the Hurricanes. So I really like watching the Hurricanes. They're probably one of the teams I like watching the most in the NHL. Like I think almost every player on the team, from a personality perspective, I really like. So I love their lineup. Uh, they've got interesting jer jerseys and uniforms and stuff. So I, they're a team that I just, I just like to watch a lot. And they're also... Um, I, I started to root for them when they were the underdog, when they were going through the transition. So I have like a secret love for the Hurricanes a little bit. But Brent Burns is kind of the question mark for me. I just, he was such an impact player and he's not anymore. And I hope he can be this year. Maybe the, you know, the new scenery in Carolina will do some good for him. I hope that's the case because I really like Burns 
personality. Like, he's such a funny guy, such a goofy guy. I would love to see him kind of get back into his game and have a really good season with the Carolina Hurricanes. But I fully expect them to do quite well this year. Uh, number one, I got the Rangers. Uh, I think last year was incredible progression for the team. I loved watching them. They've got my favorite coach in the NHL. I'm going to love watching them this year. I love so many players individually on the team. I just like... Just from a talent perspective and individual positions, like at, watching Adam Fox play is amazing. Watching, uh, you know, Kako plays one of my favorite players. I love watching him play. He's not the most talented player, but I love watching him play. I don't know. I just think it's a fun team to watch, and I like, I like where they're going. So I got the Rangers and number one in the Metro Division. All right, let's do the Central next, actually. So in the Central, I've got, um, I, I actually originally had the Coyotes eighth. And I, I moved them up to seventh. I'm going to put the Blackhawks eighth. I looked at the lineups again. I looked at, uh, I don't know, I guess, uh, you know, preseason, like line combinations and stuff a little bit. I watched some highlights and I watched back some games. I just don't feel a lot of inspiration with Chicago. So I decided to put them in eighth. Also, it's Kane and Taves last uh, season, or not last season, <laughs> last uh, contract season, I guess. So I don't know if they're going to be playing for a contract. I don't know if they're just going to be like, I'm... I'm just ready to move on from Chicago. I think maybe a lot of people are ready to move on from Chicago. I don't see them making the playoffs or even coming close to making the playoffs. They could actually potentially come last in the entire NHL, regardless of division, just come last in the NHL. But, you know, they might surprise some people and uh, never know. Could be a bubble team. Uh, number seven, I put the Coyotes. I don't know how they're going to do in that small arena. Could be a good thing. Could be a bad thing. I don't really know. Um, it could be, they could go the entire season without winning a home game because maybe they're, they got it in their head. You know, we're, oh, we're not, we're playing in a small arena. We look, maybe we don't look as good as we, as we normally do. We're a bit of an embarrassment. You know, maybe people are looking down upon us and stuff. They got that on their shoulders the entire year. I don't know how that's going to affect them. Maybe it's going to be a great thing. Maybe, you know, who knows? Less people watching us awesome you know less eyes to to watch us fail they could do really good i hope they do i'd love to see that the uh the coyotes actually make the the playoffs i think that would be awesome for hockey and for the uh location of arizona number six i have the jets i think on paper the jets are a really good team obviously the back end is not great but i think up front i love the top six i, I actually really like the bottom six depth from a depth uh sense uh goaltending things are pretty good in net if you get consistent goaltending but i just I, my gut, again, go back to the gut. My gut tells me there's just something up in Winnipeg. I don't know what it is. I just don't get good vibes from the Jets. Number five, I put the Predators. The Predators, to me, are one of those teams that just, like, if they get an outstanding year from UC Saros, they could absolutely be in the top three in this division. But they're going to need an outstanding um, season from UC Saros. I don't think they have the depth on the back end to make that happen without a really good UC Saros. I fully expect... UC Saros to steal some games for the Predators this year. Up front, I actually really like the Predators. It's just that middle ground, that that uh, defensive core, that defensive uh, lineup. I just, I don't feel great about it. Okay, moving on to uh, number four. I put the Stars. Stars are, are, are always a team that's really hard for me to predict, regardless of how much I'm following hockey or not. I just find them to always do differently than I think they're going to do. So I kind of just put them in the middle ground. The Robertson thing, that's got to get figured out, okay? That's got to get figured out. Like now, I think that's going to be weighing on the shoulders a little bit. So I just want that off the plate. I want it done. The season's about to start. Get it done. And I think with with all that pressure, uh, finally off his shoulders, finally off the team's shoulders, so they can start the season fresh and, you know, get it, get it done. You know, see, see what kind of damage they can do. Number three, the Blues. This one's tricky for me as well because if Bennington plays the inconsistent Bennington, St. Louis could maybe even not make the playoffs. But if Bennington plays like incredible Bennington, St. Louis could come first in the division. Could easily come second in the division. So I, I just don't know with St. Louis. And I'm 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 really conflicted with the with this prediction here. I don't know what St. Louis we're gonna get. Number two, and this is purely from a gut perspective, I've got the wild. And when I talked about Ottawa a little bit earlier in the Atlantic division, I talked about gut, and it's the same thing with the wild. I just get this feeling in the side that the, the Wild are going to do something special in this regular season. I don't know about postseason, but regular season, I just got a good vibe. I don't know what it is. And like on paper, I think they're a good team. I don't think they're a great team. I just get this sense that maybe this is, might be a special year for the Wild. I hope it is. I would like to see them do good. And number one, which is the obvious easy pick, is the defending uh, Stanley Cup champions, the Colorado Avalanche. Now, obviously, the goaltending has changed up a little bit. They don't have Kemper anymore, but I think they can still kind of get by pretty pretty well with who they have. So I've got the Avalanche uh, number one in the division. And again, like I said, that's the easy pick. Now on to the Pacific division. Who we got in eighth? We've got the Kraken. I think, you know, that's a pretty 
reasonable prediction. I think the Kraken the second year in the NHL, they're still kind of getting their wings under them, still trying to learn how to fly, how to, you know, how, how to live, I guess, together, how to work as a team, all new lineup. And they've obviously made some changes since the original lineup. So again, just kind of getting their feet wet and stuff. And just, um, it's a transition year. It's a growth year. People aren't expecting the Kraken to win the Stanley Cup. And uh, there, I think there's, there's not much expectation. There's, I think there's even less expectation this year than there was last year. They had that, you know, Vegas first year kind of pressure on their shoulders last year. Can you do what Vegas did their first year? Obviously they couldn't. So now the pressure's off a little bit. People have better or more, more realistic expectations for the Kraken. Number seven, I got my Sharks, my second favorite team, and it uh, hurts me to put them there. But I think objectively, the lineup's all over the place. I really like the top six. The defensive end is just, I, I don't like at all. I just, I don't know. <laughs> I feel so deflated when I talk about the Sharks because I just don't get a good feeling. I hope I'm wrong. I hope they do well, but I really don't see it. Uh, number six, the Canucks. I, I really like their top six. Actually, I love their top six. I don't like their bottom six. And, and again, the Canucks are just one of those teams that I just have a hard time predicting. I never know how they're going to do. I always kind of secretly cheer for them a little bit because I want to see them do good. I had such a great time cheering for them way back in 2010 when they went to the, I think it was 2010, when, no, 2011. Yes, yeah, 2011 when they went to the finals against Boston. Um, I would love to see them do well. I just don't get a good feeling. Uh, number five, I've got the Anaheim Ducks. I think the best way to kind of sum up the Anaheim Ducks is that they are the natural predators of the Pacific. I think with Gibson Annette, who is, I think, one of the most underrated goalies in the entire NHL, he's a goaltender that could steal you games, he could absolutely win you some games, and he could take you from, like, a bubble team to, like, inside the bubble. I think with a stellar performance from Gibson this year, we could see the Anaheim Ducks sneak into the playoffs, possibly. That's a bold thing to say, but I, I, I don't know. I, I kind of like the... The lineup, I like some of the younger guys, some of the personalities on the team as well. I think there's some excitement in, in, in back in the Ducks lineup. Obviously, there's no Getzlaff, and so there's you know it's a drastic change in Anaheim. But I don't know. I just I, I feel like it could be a good year, kind of like the Predators. You know, maybe it's a little bit of magic this year. Who knows? Number four, I've got the Kings. I love what they did last year. I thought it was phenomenal. They've got a really really interesting lineup. I I liked watching them last year. I'm going to watch them a lot this year. This might be a little bit of a biased pick because I'm I am I got so excited about them last year. I want to see them you know make the playoffs again and do good this year. But I, I think maybe some people would have them in the five or six range, and maybe someone would have them in the two or three range. Maybe a bit of hard uh, team to predict based on the uh, last season and previous season. But the lineup is quite different. Number three, I've got the Golden Knights, and I don't have them first. I don't have them second because of goaltending. Obviously, Leonard is injured, and I've got like four goalies. I think they're kind of going through right now, kind of deciding. And in the preseason games, some of the games, actually, the goaltending has been phenomenal, specifically the game, I think it was last night, just a tremendous display of, of goaltending from the uh, Vegas Golden Knights. But I just, I don't know the long-term long -term seasonal sustainability of the goaltending without Leonard. Uh, I'm curious to see how it works, but I, right now I've got them in third place. In second place, I've got Calgary. So Calgary's a really, really cool team where they like the 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 s hit the fan if you know what i'm saying and we had players leaving and for a week it was like oh my god calgary's thinking and then the next week they made some incredible moves and like oh my god calgary's not sinking calgary's going to do very well again and i'm wondering if this year's team is better than last year's team obviously different lineup some big names not in, the, in there anymore some new names coming in huberto Kadri. how are they going to do how is this calgary team going to do i think they're going to do a second place finish in the season. I feel pretty good about Calgary and I'm excited to watch them. And to round up the, out, out the Pacific, we've got the Oilers. Listen, expectations are high for the Oilers. They did very well last year in, in, uh, in the postseason. I think because of that, because the lineup hasn't really changed that much, the Oilers have so many uh, weights and stresses on their shoulders. Their expectations are there and I think they're going to deliver. I think they're going to have an excellent regular season and I think they're going to get back into the playoffs and I think that they're going to might actually do some damage again in the playoffs. I'm excited to watch um, a lot of Pacific games actually this year. I'm going to watch my Sharks because they're my Sharks. I'm going to watch Anaheim because I love the lineup. The Kings interest me. What's going to happen in Vegas? They're always an interesting team to watch. you got Calgary with the new players. you get got Edmonton as well. The Pacific is just a really, really interesting division this year. So I'm excited to watch a lot of Pacific hockey. Now, let's get on to the final piece of the resistance here. My Stanley Cup prediction. Who's going to win the Stanley Cup? Who do I think? Who am I predicting to win the Stanley Cup? Well, I'm going to go the easy direction, okay? I'm not going to take any risks uh, this year. I'm going to play it safe. It's not going to be the Avalanche, okay? I'm not going to say, uh, you know, repeat Stanley Cup. I'm not going to go with that easy, but I'm going to go the next best step. I'm going to say that the Stanley Cup winner this year is going to be the Tampa Bay Lightning. 
I think they absolutely have the lineup that could get it done. I think they're going to be just fantastic. And they could they could lose like three core players or three, we'll say three depth players and still just do so well. Like that's just how good this team is. They've got the experience tons of experience a ridiculous amount of experience they've got the skill they've got the depth they've got the position they've got the coaching the systematic play they literally have everything so i can absolutely see the tampa bay lightning winning another stanley cup it's not what i want to happen but i think it is what's going to happen based on uh, on my prediction i guess so there you have it there's my official prediction of what's going to happen this year in the nhl and i am 99 percent sure that 99% of that will be completely incorrect, but that's okay. It's always just for fun. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. I appreciate you watching this video. If you like this kind of content, please consider hitting the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. And if you enjoyed it, obviously hit the like button. That really helps the channel a lot. But you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.